in starting this podcast, I, you know, just people don't know what the experience is like and just getting people to talk about it. Yeah. Not only helps the person that's talking, but it gets people thinking and, and finding new solutions and connect, making always, connections. Exactly. And, and, and the more we talk about it, the more awareness we are, the more people are going to be aware. And, you know, from now from the banking side and investment side, there is more and more people, <clears throat> more and more high net worth individual and investors wants to invest money that are for social good. That's great. Not, not only, you know, to make money for social good. So, you know, like UBS does that, to have it just a portfolio and, and investors who want to invest or donate for social good. So I bet. I, you know, so I have a people that I will be talking to in UBS to try to figure out how we can do that. But That's beautiful. At the end of the day, what matters is that adults with IDD is going to have the chance to prove to society they are worth it that they are there for a reason, mm. that they think differently, that they make the world a better place, that they can be part of the society and and and, and, and glow and grow and, and, you know. And then for parents, they can sleep better at night knowing that <laughs> there is something there for, for the child. And I can see my child anytime I wanted to. And I can talk to my child anytime I wanted to. I, I can yeah, come I, and visit my child anytime I wanted to. Yes. So wow, I, and it's it's just you know I, I get emotional like I feel it I, I can <laughs> feel it in my like I'm just I'm thrilled I that you're thinking of like so many different levels you have it you know you just have well to, thought yeah. out lots of resources yeah. yeah wow and it's funny because when I went for meetings and everybody you know everybody when they see me when they saw me in the Wall Street was like okay the tough you know uh huh tough woman come in and you know put everybody on their place. <laughs> but, and you have to be running your Wall Street and your female. I'm sure. I can't, I can't imagine. I'd be eaten alive. I'd probably last a day. <laughs> but then when I go for a meeting, and when I went for a meeting and I talk about the project, and you have a 250-pound man, you know, six feet five, sitting across you, and I said, you know, my partner's talking about it, and, you know, um, my other partner's talking about it, and then, Everybody comes to me. He goes, well, you tell your story. And I said, you're sure you want to hear it, but you're going to need a Kleenex. And he goes, oh, no, I'm, you know, he goes, oh, look at me. I'm like, okay, I just warned you. So like 15 minutes later, I see him. He goes, uh, I got to walk out. And I was like, oh. tears, are, tears are coming down. And I'm like, you know, tearing because I always tear about it. It's, 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 it's close to my heart and it's precious. And, and then and he's looking, he goes, I'll be back. And I said, I told oh. you, you need to clean it back. <laughs> like, I make, I make people cry. But yeah, but that's okay. I think people need to cry a little. They need to know the weight of it because you can't look yeah. away. We can't look away from, in our society, from people that are, that are, you know, we have, we have to have some presumption of competence. Uh, it's there. It's just under a diff, a whole different matrix that they're, they're locked in and fi- helping them unlock it. And yes be useful and, everyone and, wants to feel useful you know yes exactly and it, it, this is my whole point i was like but it, the thing is like as a society we don't think about it but every meeting that i went to there is always somebody who knows or has somebody with disability and it's the same and at the end of the conversation they go i have a same fear or my family members have yeah. the same fear and i said but people don't talk about it and yeah I when said, i when saw I, your article i was like ah oh. I was just, yeah, she's getting the word out. This is awesome. <laughs> right. So, I mean, it, it, but we need to talk about it because we do. Those are real lives. I mean, those are real lives. Right. Just, like, and each I'm one a- of those lives, you know, there's a, there's a million, there's a whole bunch of other connections. Like, for instance, you know, you see the child, but there's a parent and there's grandparents and there's, sib- there's siblings and there's all kinds of people that, you know, want to care about, want to care. They care. And I think if they understood it, yeah, it's easier yeah. to look away, I think, in a lot of, in a lot of instances, but when it hits home. Then they change their minds. Like, change. You know, I would love to contact the CEO of Microsoft because his son has a cerebral pulse and he's working on AI to help the disabled community. Really? Right. So, I mean, and this is what I've been doing, like research is who I can, who actually understands what, 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 what families like ours going through. Yeah, they are wanted to there. You know, they want to help, and and and, we, 
and, and you need to have a compassion. And you do need to have passion for, for the project. And you need to have a passion for, for people. Like if I see, and the funny part is that I have six year old boy twins. Uh-huh. And one of, I mean, one of them is a little bit like, you know, don't care much. The, uh, the other one, Mac, he has a, such a compassion and empathy for people. Like when he goes to school, there is a, there is a boy, um, with a Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. And Max, Always make sure that he's going to class, that he's taking care of, that, and to Nikki, the same thing. When Nikki cries, Max is the only few people that can calm him down. But he goes to him, he goes, everything's gonna be okay, Nikki. I know you're in a pain, but everything's gonna be okay. Just calm down, just calm down. And Nikki kind of calms down and smile and, and, and hugs him and, you know, uh. because he has that, that I think also because he grew up with Nikki and he understands that it's difficult sometimes. Like right. if I have a bad day, you know, with Nikki, because you get frustrated sometimes because you're trying to figure out what's wrong and you can because if I could take a pain away or if I could feel what he feels knowing how I can help him. So I get frustrated. I'm not perfect. Nobody is. Oh, it's so frustrating. I mean, you can have yeah. all your ducks in a row with TSC and, you know, two weeks later, you're in the hospital emergency room because of some, you know, issue that yeah. you, just, you just can't control. You, so. you can. And, and you break down. And I'm, you know, and I'm open about it. And I break down. And oh, me too. <laughs> Mike goes, I'm like, he goes, mommy, do you need the tissues? I'm like, I'm okay. He goes, Nikki again. I said, well, it's, you know, it's hard. He goes, I know, but it's going to be better. I'm going to become a neurosurgeon and I'm going to help uh, kids like Nikki. I'm like, wait a minute now. Who's this saying this Max, to you? Max. He's oh, okay. year old. He want to be pediatric neurosurgeon since he was three years old. Wow. Right. So, and he loves children. He will kiss every soul. I was like, Max, they need to ask people if you can actually touch their child because some people are very iffy about it. Yeah. You no, know, he just goes and he like, you know, hugs. Oh, how cute! And kisses at the max. Don't. Just... Yeah, but he has that that compassion, yes. and he's 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 been exposed to that. Exactly. That experience. But if, people, but if people are not exposed to that, they don't care. I know. Yeah. And I was at my me. at my daughter's day pro day program uh, a few weeks ago, and they were having a picnic. And I, you know, it was for, you know, caregivers or whoever to come to. And you could just tell amongst the staff, the people that were naturals and it were really, mm, there was no um, kind of separation between, like they were over the, the, the clients of the program and the ones who, you know, st- didn't, weren't able to make that, you could just almost feel it. Yes. If you know, I think you know what I mean. Some people just can, and and I'm not saying the other that everybody has to be in that compassionate role because I think we need a. There's people that aren't wired, just maybe not wired that way, and they're fulfilling a different role in their own way. But I I do think there's there's a quality of of experience and compassion that you really have to have to work with the population of like Uh, IBD and autism, Uh, and and you have to have a patient of the gold. Oh because, gosh, yeah. <laughs> and and this is another thing. Like when I was, you know, when Nikki was born, I I would I had no patience whatsoever. Right. So what Nikki taught me was, okay, certain things can wait. There's not gonna be everything done when you want it to, and you need to learn to be patient. Otherwise, you're gonna go to crazy house. Yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. I I you know I'm very very task oriented. I want to do this 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 and this and you know, God forbid somebody get in my way, but I've definitely had to rewrite that whole line of thinking. Yeah, so this would be because exactly this is what our kids teach us. Patience. Yes. And okay. like sometimes like I'm sitting next to Nikki, you know, I'm feeding him and he's all happy and smiling and the next thing you know, he takes his left uh left hand and go and grab my neck. You're like, Okay, this is it, he's gonna kill me, right? <sighs> But then you try to like calm him down and like two seconds later he comes and he gives you a hug and he wants to kiss you and you know, he wants to be near you and he wants to hear you and it's It's, it's very easy. hard to switch like that because as a human, you know, you you're naturally um emotional about something like that. Yes. And then like I'm looking at him like and he for past probably three weeks, he's more um he wants to be more near me. 
and more like before he would just want to be by himself uh-huh. and he would come, you know, walk a little bit and come to the kitchen if he's hungry and this kid is always hungry. Um, <laughs> Tell me. Yeah. <laughs> and, not, and he loves like pretzels and apples because he eats finger food, but like when it's like soup or, you know, anything that I have to feed him with a, with a spoon, he can, so I have to feed him. Wow. But he likes, he, you know, finger food, he's fine. And mm-hmm. He knows where it is and, and, and whatnot. But he's now, he wants to be more affectionate. Like in the morning before he goes to school bus, you know, we hug for like five minutes and he kissed me. Well, his kisses, meaning, you know, he just touched your head with his cheek or uh-huh. whatever it is. But he's more now more affectionate, but at the same time, he's more aggressive, uh-huh. you know, at times. So yeah. you never know what you might get. You, you know? never know. I'm, I'm walking sometimes with the bruises and everybody's looking at me and said, no, it's not for my husband. It's for my son. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like, I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's for my son. He goes, your son? I'm like, it's a long story. <laughs> like, you know, like, because, you know, his hug. Oh, I hear you. I do. Can feel, you can feel it and see it oh. for, like, months, you know. <laughs> so it's like Tattooed on you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, he sounds like he sounds like a great, amazing kid. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a sweet boy, and yeah, you know, again, it wouldn't be for him. I wouldn't, honestly, I would be probably one of those people who wouldn't think about it, who wouldn't think about the project, and and you know what happens to them. So. I feel so. I feel too. I feel as if my path would have been the same, and I, I never would have cared in the way that I can really care. And it's it hurts like hell all the time yeah. <laughs> to see them <laughs> suffer. You know, to see your kids suffer on any level. It's just as a mother, you know. It's just heart wrenching. So it is. Uh, I don't but know. Hopefully, you know, we're gonna you're, do. Yeah, one. you're <laughs> making progress, and I am just blown away. So, um, and if anybody has any ideas that you know we can implement, we're gonna be sending surveys for parents. What you know, what they would like to have there, and their opinion, and and because I, it's not only for the residents, also for parents. You know, I mean, I want to die in peace. Yes, yeah, surveys are great. Does. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if well, if you are, can if think of any desire. way that I can help, I mean, I'd love to have you on the podcast again in a few months and see how you do, how, you know, check that would in. Be great. And, yeah. That would be great. I mean, we're working, you know, we're trying to get on the TV as well. I mean, the more we can talk about it, I, 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 I feel like the more we can talk about it, the more awareness we can spread, the more, you know, stigma. Um, Absolutely. It's going to disappear not disappear never gonna disappear because you're always gonna find an asshole oh but, yeah well uh, <laughs> it's another we podcast every day. exactly <laughs> <laughs> we live with this every day yeah um, right it's, it's it's you know and anybody can you know have any ideas or wants to help or i love anything. it that you're so open and and willing to you know it's not your project it's, it's no it's for everybody it's mm-hmm. for everybody and again the, the biggest gift i can give parents to be in peace and have a good night's sleep for mm-hmm. once and knowing that their child's going to be taken care of well. And it's coming from, you know, parent who understands. And, and we cannot be in a denial. They're getting older. We're right. getting older. You know, it's going to get harder. And That's what it is. I think I spent some time in denial, you know, of the weight of it and what it would look like in the future. And that... It, that's one reason why I'm so outspoken now is the more you can just look at it. And even if you can't look at everything, you know, each day, what can you do? Exactly. To push your, you know, to help your kid in one small way. And nobody knows better your you know, child like you do. And one of the things that I want to make sure that if you, you know, like if you bring your child to our residence, you have to, well, you will have to, not, I don't, I cannot say it have to, but, you have the option to stay with him or with her for a week and help us and help them and, and yourself as well to trans, you know, to transition. To make to that, that transition. Because it's easy, it's going to be easy for you telling us because you know the child better than we do. But to it's have the live in experience is exactly. ideal. Exactly. I don't think you could really do it adequately any other way. I no, mean, and it helps us also to take care of your child better and it helps you to knowing that he's going to be taken care of because if you're not going to like the nurse or if you're not going to like 
the staff, you come and talk to me. I mean, I am open door policy.